Access to clean, safe, and potable water is one of the indices of a modern society. And this, the present administration in the state is working relentlessly to build through its numerous water projects that cut across the state. Hello and welcome. This is Ekiti on the Move. I am Tunji Saliu. Let's start with our quick takes for this week. You welcome back. In focus this week. From urban to rural, extra water projects reach advanced stages. On assumption of duty of Governor Kayo de Fayemi in 2018, many of the development partners who had earlier taken flight from Ekiti began to make their return to continue in their interventions in critical sectors of the state economy. One of such partners is the World Bank, which before the end of the first tenure of Dr. Kyle Defiany in 2014, had commenced the third national urban water sector reform in the state. The previous administration that inherited that uh, uh, initi in initiative didn't do any, refused to do anything about it. So that left all the waterworks to operate at near zero capacity. Only a raw, uh, raw dam was operating at about 10% capacity, and uh, Ureje Dam was operating at about 40% capacity. Egwe Dam was shut down. All the small water schemes were shut down. Uh, for four years. And uh, immediately, His Excellency came back on board. He picked it up where, where he, he left it, and uh, the reform we are now driving. The project got a new lease of life in 2018. Immediately, Dr. Kyle Defiami returned. Between then and now, so much progress has been made very soon. It will no longer be a case of water everywhere, but none to drink for Ikitikete. Ero is the biggest dam we have in the state. There is total rehabilitation of Ero. All the pumps, they, they are being changed. And then uh, all other necessary works to be done to restore that scheme to its initial design capacity. They are being done there and it's nearing completion. Sometimes this coming month, we are going to start testing from a row end to see all the panels, pumps put in place to see uh, how effective they are. There is um, a transmission made through Ifaki, from a row through Ifaki to Ado. A section of it from Ifaki to Ado needs total replacement or relocation. And that one is almost nearing completion as well. And to support the agency and to supply water more to the people of Ekiti to have improved service delivery, we also have a 2,000 cubic meter reservoir, a reinforced concrete cubic meter reservoir being constructed at 5G. As I'm talking with you, they are only doing connection to is is almost completed roof. So we are only doing connection to the inlet and the outlet, so as to link the transmission main 
to that reservoir. And then from that reservoir, you can also pump to the community. The third project we have on, uh, on, uh, under this third national biological sector reform project that I refer to is the extension, 251 kilometer extension within Ado Township because the project centers on urban and Ado as the state capital has been selected as the urban, way, uh, urban center where they will intervene. So we have 251 kilometer extension on all these projects are at various levels of completion. Another project we have under the bank, and we are collaborating with the bank, is the construction of a Bifiti and standard office building for the State Water Corporation. We are, we are, as you can see, you can see the office of the general manager, is a domestic building turned to be managed as office. So they have a standard along the Uruko Road, you see the building that is on, under construction as well. The bank is also supporting us to have um, to intervene in Ureje Dam, so that because that's the main dam in the state capital, we can but work on the uh, on some of the ponds and the rest of it. So it's also ongoing. We call this old treatment plant. All the pumps here, they are highly formed. They are, we can use to pump to different areas in Ado, even to the as far as to all those reservoirs. The, we have one reservoir at Okayaba, we have another reservoir at Fagi, we have another reservoir at Okela, and the other one at uh, Mary Hill, which is about the highest point in Ado. We have complete reservoir. We pump to all those areas from here. This is where we have the island for the treatment uh, section, where we can live. One of the major thrusts of the third national urban water sector reform, apart from infrastructural overhaul of the urban water scheme, is sustainability of water access through attitudinal and organizational reforms. Reform has to do with uh, organizational structure, you know, uh, how will the scheme be run effectively. Part of the reform is the establishment of uh, the state um, water sanitation uh, regulatory agency that <clears throat> that is uh, that uh, is being established to regulate the sector so that private investors can come in to the sector. See, gone are the days when water. Yes, water is a social service, but we must understand that you know it has to be run sustainably because otherwise we we'll have this epileptic operation where it runs for two years, it breaks down. You need another government with goodwill like Dr. Dr. Femi to come back, to want to bring it back. Otherwise, if you don't have the political will, you don't have the mindset to do that. You leave it, you can, you can play around it for four years or eight years, you leave, this, you, leave this, you leave the problem. But thank God we have a governor who knows the importance of water, you know, who, is, who, who prioritize it and is committing a lot of resources into it, you know. So what we want to achieve now is that we should be able to run it sustainably so that it will be able to run for itself with little contribution coming from the state. While the World Bank assisted third national urban water reform focuses on urban areas, the European Union assisted water scheme is also underway in Ekiti State. Its focus is on rural water access. Through this scheme, the government of Governor Cal Defiani has restored the glory of one of the major dams in the state. Igbe Dam is uh, 66,000 cubic uh, meter per day capacity. That is 66 million liters of water per day. It has capacity to serve five, rural, five local governments and even supply water to another state. I mean, the dam. So, um, 
we picked up that project when we came on board and uh, His Excellency committed a lot of resources you know, to ensure that uh, we, re we rehabilitate that dam to its full original capacity and that has been achieved. All the low lift pumps have been replaced, the high lift pumps have been replaced, the sedimentary reservoir has been repaired and uh, even including the rehabilitation of the, of the buildings there. So, practically bring it, bring it back the glory of the, of, the, of the dam to its original capacity. This dam has been abandoned as, uh, since 2014 when Dr. John Karifaimi left office uh, in 2014. No water has been produced from this dam since 2014. But when Dr. Karifaimi came back uh, in 2018, uh, the first thing he did was to revisit this project and he mandated us at the ministry that he want this project to be back on track. And uh, since that time, a lot of work has been done. And uh, with the work that has been done, uh, the dam has been restored back to its uh, original capacity. And uh, uh, all the generators servicing the scheme has been replaced with brand new ones. Uh, all the transformers have been replaced with brand new ones. So you, we can say for sure that this dam has been returned to brand new scheme you know, as it were today. We felt that it's not just to rehabilitate the dam, we need to take the water to the people, you know. The second leg of that is to rehabilitate the transmission lines. And uh, the transmission lines, our focus now is to take this water to several communities in Boeing local government. And uh, we are, we are, we've started rehabilitating those lines. We have started test pumping now so that we can trace the line because the line has not functioned for, for, for more than five years now. So we are rehabilitating the line. When we take the water to the reservoirs, we have reservoirs in all these communities. The plan is also to rehabilitate those reservoirs. The work is ongoing in the rehabilitation of those reservoirs that will keep, that will store the water where we pump from the dam. Several communities are also benefiting from this initiative from Boni to Ikiti West. Some of them have in pipe bond water for the first time. There's a community called Imesekiti. They've not had water, access to water since the inception of that community. No access to water, to public water. His Excellency, you know, has broken that record now because we are laying transmission pipeline to that community to service that community. And uh, within the next four weeks, that pipeline project, the transfer pipeline to Imesekiti will be completed so that that community will have, for the first time in history, Access to public potable water. A mutant boy, I take be on laughing to Pelo or Lolawa, Governor and Doctor Kaya defy me, both boy to a lady along a Jacob Shashi Yori, O mutant boy, like bar along a tea wanting by wine, wanting in farm food, but he will be a delayo, Cocariwa, he know what do. Other projects under this scheme include interventions in Eregion, OK Messi, Idoile, Ario, Aramoko. We are at uh, a region, uh, water scheme uh, that is to serve a region of community and a uh, Kogosi. The scheme itself is completed. Uh, we are expecting to 
to uh, reconstruct the line from Enigion to Ikogosi so that we can start full, uh, full pumping. The high lift pump has been replaced. These are the two high lift pumps here. It has been replaced. This is, to serve, this is to take water to the reservoir that will serve the two communities. You can see the new pumps. These are the transfer pumps. This is to transfer water from the raw water you know, to the treatment plant. Uh, this is the treatment plant. You can see the, we have uh, four reservoirs here, you know, that where the, where the water will be treated. And uh, this is the compressor for backwashing, you know. After you treat the water, you need to backwash again. So this is the compressor to backwash. So the system has been fully installed. It has been tested, it has been running. During the first time of His Excellency, these water schemes were rehabilitated. But for four years, the last time we refused to operate these this, uh, water schemes. And, you know, the lapidation came in, you know, some of, some of the assets were being, you know, cutted away, you know, all those, all those where it's like a neglect, complete neglect. And when we came on board, we picked up a region water scheme and uh, we have rehabilitated the scheme back again. The scheme is ready, it's, all, it's functioning as we speak and uh, uh, the scheme will now serve a cogosy to extend transmission line between a region to, to a cogosy and to construct a new reservoir for them. 20,000 um, um, cubic liter reservoir for that community. That's 200,000 liters of water, you know, that will serve the community, you know, and it was, it was constructed on the hill so that it can, it can discharge through gravity at, at very low, low cost. So the, the target of ensuring that our communities have access to safe water is, uh, is, is being met. Any, with, at least in these communities that I'm mentioning. Uh, before, go to a river to fresh water, but now, come here to fresh water and open it morning and afternoon. I hope you find out if 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 you Okay, fine, that ensures community participation in provision of safe, clean, portable water to the people. We are going to the stream to fresh water, but where this project started, and they are, we are fetching water from the fetching point. So our people are going there, but they are paying a little, little amount of money so that we can use to run the, the project. That mini scheme is being run by the community. And for the first time also, that community now has public water. They now, for the first time, we have public water. You know, the community themselves, we, they, we know this WCA, I mean, Water Consumer Association, we have, we have them in all the communities. We set them up in all the communities. They reform that His Excellency, you know, the mindset was to have a reform within the sector. So we felt the community can run their own public utility, especially water. And uh, we set them up and they have been functioning and they have been running that mini scheme, you know, collecting revenue, servicing the, the scheme and uh, producing water for the community. So that's reform. That shows that with right thinking government, our people, you know, can actually develop themselves. What we are driving towards is sustainable water supply. Uh, today, beyond the ones that we have seen, you have seen a whole lot of water assets in the state. Investment into water assets. Now, the key issue to the ministry is the sustainability. That how do we, 2030 and beyond, 
and when beyond uh, beyond the lifespan of even this equipment, what are the basic concept models that we have to do? So government is looking at different approaches across the whole sector, from urban to small and rural. So we are going to evaluate all of these processes and the achievements and now come up with a position that will lead us to sustainable uh, progress in the water supply indicators. With works on this water project reaching advanced stages of completion, the story of Ekiti in respect of provision of portable water will change very soon. I can say for sure that uh, 70% of Ekiti will have said to be covered uh, with this project. Let me say 80%, 10% for rural components. We have done a lot in the area of rural components, which maybe I felt is not as bogus to discuss. You know, we have provided underground water through our Rwasa. We have sunk bowls, you know, over 400 bowls. You know, um, we are rehabilitating old ones. So a lot of, um, I mean, uh, low-hanging fruits, you know, that that uh, maybe it's too common to say, uh, you know, consider that as an achievement. We are doing a lot of that. So, so let, if I give that like 10%, you know, but in the real public water, water, um, uh, pipe bone water, so to say, I mean, with all the infrastructure that uh, His Excellency Dr. Joka Refeni is, is carrying out now, um, the state should have 70% coverage. Yo, cool. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> It is expected that with access to clean water, hygiene practice will peak in the state, and this will greatly enhance the state's SDGs rating on clean water and sanitation. This will help in the state's relentless effort in fighting open defecation and other unhygienic practices associated with lack of access to quality water. From the foregoing, it is obvious that in a matter of few months, it will be commissioning galore in the water sector in Ekiti State. Before we go, this is the fact file for this week. That will be all this week. Thanks for watching. You can watch this episode and previous ones on our YouTube channel showing on your screen. We will also be glad to have feedbacks from you via our social media platforms also on display. Till next week, goodbye. <laughs> Ay,